First, I apologize that we're just coming. There's the logistics of our travels, but um, finally we're here. Praise God. Hallelujah. And um, please, would you help me honor the woman of God and honor everyone who has made this meeting. We honor our mothers, our sisters, our aunties. Let's give them a big, big God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. I stepped in and just a few minutes of um, victorious worship I mean I was almost not coming to preach again let's honor her God bless you hallelujah I cannot do it on my own unless you take over I cannot see these things alone Unless you take over How can I see you on my own? Jesus take over Take over Jesus take over I cannot know you on my own Unless you take over Not leave this life alone unless you take over let it be your prayer so take over by yourself unless he takes over sing it one time take over Jesus take over take over Jesus take over spirit of the living God we submit to your wisdom we have come for a real encounter. We have come with hearts opened. We have come because we recognize your ability to show us the truths that are contained in the word. In the name of Jesus, that you will transform our lives, take us to dimensions unimagined in the name of Jesus Christ. Would you do me a favor to just walk up to 10 people and tell them your life is truly about to change. Your life is truly about to change. Your life is about to change.
Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please be seated again. God bless you. I truly believe with all my heart and I prayed and I asked the Lord to even honor this desire in my heart first for um, and our sisters, our aunties because they they are hosting us and granting us an opportunity to experience God again and, and I pray that the blessing will start from them yeah. hallelujah praise the Lord so let's pay attention and trust the Lord to give us understanding in this kingdom we reign by light it takes more than desire it is our understanding our comprehending the ways of God this is where the victory of the believer is the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18, he says, having their understanding darkened, says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. So conferences like these, much more than times where we just fellowship with one another, there are times when the spirit of the Lord opens us up to dimensions of understanding. It matters that you not only know God, but that you understand his ways. Praise the Lord. Please listen. When it has to do with the pursuit of God, our knowledge of his person and our conformity in experience into his image and his likeness, there is no end. We will continue that system of transition through eternity. But when it has to do with your victory in this kingdom, the systems of God and the principles that make for your victory are finite. They can be learned, they can be known. They are not infinite. It is the pursuit of God, the pursuit of his person, knowing him, the encounter that comes. It, it is from one level, one dimension to the other. But as far as your excelling in life is concerned, you can hold the keys, they are finite. Praise the Lord. Number two, it is important that we understand that the spirit of revelation um, cannot be replaced with an educated mind. Now, I don't mean this to insult our knowledge or intellectual studies, but you see, when it has to do with spiritual things, the character of God's communication is such that both the learned and the learned must equally depend on the spirit of revelation. Sometimes, um, on the strength of the things that we have and we know and the obvious results they have produced, we may not necessarily see the need to be passionate to learn. or two things not his presence his presence will require that you take off your shoes your experience and the symbol that you know him to be he told Moses take off your shoes I am not one of the many gods in Egypt I'm about to introduce myself in a new dimension lest you add me to the myriads of gods take off your shoes for where you stand is holy ground let me show you a scripture and then will deal with a few things um isaiah 29 and verse 11 is a scripture that has blessed me so much and is a scripture that humbles me every time i'm about to learn at his feet he says and the vision if you can see it is projected the vision of all is become unto you as the words of a book please say the words of a book the Bible says the words of a book that is sealed say sealed and then he says which men deliver unto one that is and he says I cannot for it is sealed it is not closed but it is sealed just because it was open does not mean the seal was broken next verse and the book is delivered unto him that is not learned saying read this i pray thee and he said i am not learned that means there is a realm where both the learned and the unlearned stand helpless depending only on the spirit of god to grant light 
may this be such a meeting in the name of Jesus thank you so let's get to the word um, I believe that the Lord is going to really really help us and grant us understanding we'll start from first Chronicles chapter 12 please and verse 32 I used to think God dwells in the realm of eternity and for a long time Until I understood what eternity was, then I found out that God does know eternity. He dwells in a dimension that only He can define. Eternity is time, it's just that it is time that is limitless. And every time you compress God to time, you insult His sovereignty. He does not dwell in eternity. Are we together now? God is not only timeless. No. Eternity means the summation of infinite dispensations. One dispensation connecting another. But they are still time dependent. He dwells in a realm that the Bible simply describes as unapproachable light. Are we together? The Bible says in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. Meaning he was in neither of them you cannot create of that system to create it are we together now yes but when it has because he constructed this dimension of his kingdom and allocated a mystery called times and seasons please say after me times and seasons hallelujah the bible says he made the stars also having made the sun and the moon then the bible says he made the stars and that the assignment of the stars among other things is to signify seasons that means that they can guide our into times and seasons so it is true that God does not dwell in time. Please listen. But he designed man and limited man to function within the circumference of time. Are we together? That means the greatest gift man really has, second only to salvation, is time. And that if you understand times and seasons and you know how to align to the possibilities that come with times and seasons, then you can walk in victory. The Bible is very clear about the fact that all things are not possible every time. No. You may plant during the dry season as we have in our region here. You are not guaranteed to have a bumper harvest if you will have one at all. Is that true? Because there is an advantage that comes with the rainy season. It saves you the rigor of looking for water the season was designed with that advantage in view so if you desire a bumper harvest your assignment is to continue to look at the weather and to find a time when your desire collides with the season that supplies an advantage is, is God speaking to us yes so with minimal effort you will plant during the rainy season and you will find out that your crops will grow because part of the possibilities and the advantage that comes with that season is rain. You can outsource a system during the dry season to supply water, but it will be at a cost. That means that not all seasons carry the same possibilities. Please listen very carefully. It is important we understand this. That every time a season comes, there is always what God is doing. He's not always doing the same thing all the time. He has his emphasis. Again, we see in the Bible, Gabriel appears to people to introduce seasons. The archangel that introduces seasons. Are we together now? He comes to Daniel to introduce a new season. He comes to Mary the virgin to announce to her that she's about to be with child and that will usher another season. Times and seasons. 
first chronicles chapter 12 and verse 32 the bible says and the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times to know what israel ought to do it says the heads of them were 200 and all their brethren were at their command what was their advantage they understood the times to know what israel ought to do so my assignment in this conference is that by the wisdom of the spirit to be able to guide us to know what times and that in a time like this what is the posture what is the response what is the advantage that this season comes with for the believer are we together let's go to the book of esther this is where my teaching will come from we're going to be exploring the book of esther for many years the book of esther has been for me a very very interesting book because in this book we do not find the record of a man of god and a priest which is very strange because the character of scripture is such that regardless of the dispensation you would usually find someone who would represent the voice and the hand of god within the context of that dispensation but esther is very strange the bible starts by flaunting the glory of a very strange king called Ahasuerus. Please follow me. The Bible is not careful to show us the length and the breadth of this man's achievement, the extent of his greatness. That he was a king that exerted dominion over 127 provinces. A single man. I wonder why the Bible would take out the time and the rigor to be that detailed. It was fine enough to say there was once a great king. And this man was head of 127 provinces. That's enough. But the Bible goes on to give a, meticulously. The Bible talks about his princes and all the people that represented his cabinet. Amen. Then the scene changes. The Bible introduces a very strange woman who the Bible admits to be very beautiful called Vashti. Please follow me. The Bible is talking to us about a woman who at that time was his bride called Queen Vashti. And the Bible lets us know that she was a woman who was fair to look upon. I'm just taking the narrative so that we'll save time. And then at a point it was, in those days it was very consistent in the character of kings to organize banquets and invite neighboring princes or neighboring kings and to flaunt their glory in their presence they would show them the spoils of war they would show them the treasures of the palace they would call the orators to come and you know just captivate the people with their skill and all of that and on this one occasion the king called for a banquet and then while the men were under the influence of the wine and the bounty of the palace on the other side of the palace was Vashti having her own thing she had her own cabinet too and please follow this narrative because there are two things I'll be discussing one today and then the other tomorrow the next major issue the Bible discusses is the dishonor that a woman communicates to the king and the consequence that follows the king calls for vashti to come and all he wanted to do with her can you imagine that was for her to just turn around and go around and tell the kings look take a good look at this woman who is called my wife and the moment vashti heard that she felt insulted and she believed she was being used and she rebelled she sent a reply Go and tell the king, Vashti will not come. Are we together? The king is grieved, but decides to stay calm. Very good man. And then the elders come together and advise the king and say, Mr. Man, we're in trouble. It looks like you want to be passive about this issue. This woman just showed dishonor 
and she's in a position where anything she does is regarded worthy of emulation the the effect of this that she has done is that what begin to do likewise are we together so it says do something that will be a warning preserve the honor of the women in your province by you are more interested in the continuity of your province than your personal agenda and the king said so. okay that's all right and they threw Vashti away please listen the book of Esther is very interesting because the moment Vashti is banished then the story takes another switch that there is a man who sat at the gate called Mordecai a Jew am I boring you and then Mordecai took a lady in his custody a village girl to be very very modest and the Bible says that she had no father no mother please follow me and there is an announcement from the palace gather all the virgins in Shushan the king is about to look for another wife and Mordecai summons the courage to bring his little girl go and try your luck peradventure the king may like you are we together now and the rest is history eventually she becomes queen and then being queen she now becomes very strange the only book in the bible where the official voice of god and the advancer of god's interest was not a priest not a prophet not a mighty man warrior but a woman a woman it was because of that woman that the jews were preserved it was because of that woman that Mordecai was preserved. A woman who did not use a knife and yet judge her man. A woman who did not use a knife and yet restored chaos. Please follow me. There is something powerful you will learn. The reason why God allowed a woman to be the real actor the first wonder in the book of Esther was the transition of, to become the wife of kings in those days were arrogant people they would not only say go they would say you are not beautiful they were they were like gods so what did Esther do precious people of God that would transit this little village girl who would dare not stand close to the king's palace but now had gotten favor with the king not only to become his queen but she was willing to divide her kingdom without divorce divide the kingdom without divorce let's honor the pastor thank you sir amen. hallelujah amen Esther chapter 4 I'll begin to read from verse 13 and then I'll just share a principle and we'll pray I hope we're not going to be tired of praying in this conference I believe in prayer hmm. please read verse 13 with me if it's projected if you can see it and you're a Christian one to read then Mordecai commanded to answer Esther uh-huh Think not with thyself that thou shalt escape in the king's house more than all the Jews. Verse 14. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace at this... Stop, stop, stop. Don't rush. If you hold your peace, when? At... That means this season requires a response, Esther. If you respond another time, it will not produce the same effect. There is a time, Esther, and God is demand on a response. The letter and the threat of Haman. I hope you understand the vendetta between Haman and Mordecai. That Mordecai would not bow as a Jew. 
And her man said, no, I need absolute loyalty. This man is a threat to the position, my exalted position. And not only Mordecai, he wanted to annihilate every Jew. Are we together? And Mordecai now sent word to Esther. And Esther wanted to the mistake of Vashti. Because let me confess, the palace can disconnect you with the pain of where you came from. To the point that you may not remember that once upon a time you were in a position that now exalted God desires that you go back. The palace can so fade the scars of your pain. You will forget you were once at the backside. And so Esther was saying, look, this is not an issue of urgency. I'm queen, leave me. And Mordecai said, go and tell her, don't you forget that you are also a Jew. They may start with us, but they will not end with us. Are we together now? Verse 14. For if thou altogether holdest thy peace, when? At this time. I told you about times and seasons. That every time and every season requires a response. And then it says, there, Then there shall be enlargement and deliverance arise to the Jews from another place. But thou and thy father's house shall be destroyed. Now here's the point. Please, every woman of God here, read with me the last, um, what's now? The clause, one to go. And who knoweth whether thou art come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Please sit. God bless you. Who knowest whether thou has come to this kingdom for such a time as this? Hallelujah. Vashti is banished and there is a vacancy and you know god is totally not interested in anything that he cannot find a window for me to advance his kingdom please listen when you study the bible historically many other things happen concurrently with the things written in the bible that were worthy of being recorded some of them were recorded but they were never captured in scripture everything captured in scripture were captured with respect to their contribution to kingdom advance if god could not find a space in that story where christ will be revealed it was useless in god's economy whatever promotes christ is what he's interested in it doesn't matter how popular if christ cannot find a space for himself in any story in any life in any situation it is not worth his participation for a long time the issue of the palace was not a concern to god because everybody there did not give him space god began to be interested in the palace when there was vacancy because his desire was to find a way to bring the jews out of captivity there were people who had hopped from one level of captivity to the other notice that the name god was never mentioned until Esther showed up there was nothing in that palace that seemed to honor God and so God too was inert and silent but the moment he found a vacancy he started saying now my interest can be promoted and then a little girl gets to the palace and God says finally I've gotten someone who can represent my purposes and through that one woman not a prophet not a king not a priest the only book like i said where a woman played the role of both the prophetic the apostolic without no ordination from anyone she became the voice of god within that land there are two keys that we will learn from the entire book of esther I studied very carefully the spiritual tools that Esther used both for her exaltation and the preservation of God's people and surprisingly I thought I would find so many keys I was shocked to find only two 
and this is what we are going to be discussing and that whoever will align to possess these keys in this season will inevitably reproduce Esther's dimension of results it's uniqueness and a man's usefulness the rewarding the discerning of a man's usefulness the usefulness of a person could be an object is called honor to discern this is a phone the ability to discern the usefulness of this phone and the ability to not take it for granted i cannot act like my life with my phone and my life outside my phone is the same that's dishonor i must acknowledge the role and the ease that this gadget as small as it is contributes to the improvement of my life it can help my efficiency is that true now listen please dishonor therefore is the trivializing of a man's usefulness dishonor is the trivializing of the contribution of a person or an object in your life i show you why many people continue to fail hmm. oh no this is one of the most powerful spiritual mysteries that the lord taught me outside of the law of encounter i thank god for the privilege and the access he's granted he's granted me to um, the revelatory dimensions of god but i submit to you that if you master honor there is no power in existence that sustains the ability to clamp you down in one position you will live your life as if satan does not exist it's called honor please pay attention i show you why great people do not necessarily rise to the position that befits their sacrifice they have knowledge they have skill they even have God but they have trivialized the excellency honor is not a ladder it's a lift it can turn your life around in a moment in a twinkling of an eye please listen to me in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who likes you matters <laughs> please away with that theology that it doesn't matter um, I, I don't need men if you are saying that with respect to God's sovereign power you are right but if you are saying that with respect to trivializing the usefulness of men sit back relax and experience the shock that your ignorance will produce the episodes of pain that will come as a result of ignorance to the point that the psalmist says what is man lord you have options there are too many things to think about in the throne but in the midst of the worship he thinks of man to the point that he's not ashamed to chase man he's he 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 he's unashamed to make his vulnerability i mean he shows us how vulnerable and soft-spotted he is how dare you trivialize man what is man that thou art mindful of nor the son of man that thou visitest him please learn this and learn it forever all blessings come from god through men to you no blessing comes from god to you it looks like it came from god to you even jesus came from god through men to men all destructions come from satan through men to men and all blessings with no exception whatsoever if it looked like you had an encounter with god interfacing you and god was an intercessor somewhere just because you could not see the person anna the prophetess was in the temple for 60 years praying down jesus it was not just mary and angel gabriel there was a man in between please learn this I want you to leave this conference with something you know that you can activate right here and now and it can turn your life around are we together all blessings come from God through men to men 
it is possible for god to say yes and a man says no the answer in your life will be no hmm. believers please listen please listen david is in the wilderness seeing visions of himself being king god rejects saul as king a man comes in between called samuel and say lord i refuse and david is paying the price god already had told him mr man you are next king a prophet stands in between and say god i've not allowed this and david's destiny is in the balance waiting for the approval of not god a man and god himself knowing the immutability of the system he built had to come to the man to negotiate he said look samuel let's not drag this how long shall you weep seeing that i've rejected saul as king don't delay listen listen don't delay another man's destiny pick up your horn go to the house of jesse couldn't god bypass samuel what was the big deal in samuel says an ignorant christian was it not because they met samuel that the donkey returned back home restoration is true my question is under what condition every possibility in the kingdom is governed by spiritual conditions that make them real in your life just because they are true based on god's verdict does not mean they will manifest is god helping us this morning praise the lord Oh, I will. I will. The goal is knowledge. Please listen very carefully. I'm showing you, and I hope for some of you, I'm changing your perspectives that your answer, the answer to the many prayers, continues to move around you and is within your circumference. It is the intelligence to understand how to attract that answer to you. That the missing link is not your prayer, maybe. The missing link may not even be ungodliness that there is a spiritual weapon that can transit men from where the backside right to the throne i know you know favor but leave favor we'll discuss it the mother that gives birth to favor is called honor until honor is pregnant there is no child called favor if honor is barren you are in trouble you will never never your first assignment is to pray that honor can take in when honor takes in begin to rejoice because a child is coming and the name of that child is favor i cannot know you by myself unless you take over we cannot see this on our own jesus take over we cannot learn this by ourselves unless you take over listen please sit down let me tell you this there are many families here that have the privilege of leverage from the credibility and the integrity of their parents and may god bless you maximize it but i'm sure without contradiction that there are a few of us here that the only ladder you will have in your life is the ladder that is built through this understanding otherwise you will remain at the backside of shushan forever please hear me your growth and your lifting is not just dependent on the will of god his will for you is clear it's not a mystery i know the thoughts that i think towards you 29 and verse 11 jeremiah saith the lord they are thoughts of good peace and not of evil to bring you a future and an expected end are we together yes it is not it is not we're not in the dark as to god's desire for us to rise to the top because he said in john 15 and verse 8 he said hearing is my father glorified let me show you how the father takes glory he says when you bear much fruit so then shall ye be my disciples 
let me interpret that for you it means in your bearing much fruit you validate that i mentored you well you're not bearing fruit is an indictment on my mentorship god says let it not be that i did not show you the systems of the kingdom so when you produce result jesus comes to a tree and finds that tree with green leaves and then no fruit and he causes the tree he doesn't ask satan help me and cause this tree by himself the same anointing you want was used to cause the tree and in 24 hours the tree went down notice how sad results he saw fruitlessness it's god to someone this morning honor is the reason why you will live where you are to the next level or is the reason why you may remain where you are in spite of the fasting in spite of the prayer i came from a background that did not provide an advantage by default and i knew that if i didn't learn this i would continue to propose things i would never see in my life it is painful to propose things that your life cannot capture there is no ladder there is no dimension the next time you are writing streams of income write honor when you write real estate write honor you can earn a living practicing honor please understand what i'm telling you this is very powerful very powerful especially let me say this respectfully our generation of young people we don't understand honor at all is the reason why we life continues to be hard because transgression is a mother when she gives birth the name of her child is hardship hardship has a science to it proverbs 13 and verse 15 the bible says good understanding procured favor it says but the way of transgressors is hard a transgressor is not an unbeliever a transgressor is a violator of God's system I came truly to charge our hearts so that we will have results that bring glory to the name of the Lord there are many skillful people in this land in this city around this nation and they continue to wonder why they never rise some music ministers some men of god some women of god some career people please listen very carefully people continue to have visions and visions of growth in ministry and they wonder why in spite of all the machineries that they put in place they add every other thing to the ingredient except honor what everything in the palace minus honor produced the king is still on his throne his servants still loyal to him the chariot still in place the treasure house still full of gold and honor is extracted from a palace for one day and the palace is almost in trouble think what has been happening in your life everything minus honor degree minus honor prayer minus honor is god speaking to us honor is the discerning the celebrating and if need be the rewarding of a person of a system let me submit to you that the only reason why we have failed in life is not so much about satan it is dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles take satan out of this world men will continue suffering they will not even know he has left that's when you will know what part of our lives have nothing to do with him dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles in heaven where the devil is not angels don't just enter the throne room satan is not there evil is not there yet you don't jump in and out of the throne room there are doors there is order in heaven hallelujah 
when you trivialize the usefulness of God in your life, please listen. When you tr when God becomes like one of the many important things, you just classify him as number 13 in the list. So you are in my heart, oh God. The jealousy of God was designed to fight everything till he's number one. Even if he gave it to you. It's amazing that God can fight something he once gave you. Read the Bible and see God giving people thrones and fighting it again. The moment he cannot find his place exalted. The moment you add many things to God and say, Lord, you are important, but not the only important thing. This dishonor has translated to marriages. You are my wife. What is there? Are we not married? What part of the ring can't you see? You see that? Dishonor. Dishonor. Communicated in the pungency of our words. Communicated in the sarcasm, the body languages that are communicated. When we see great people, we so trivialize them. What is it about this artist? Is it just because God gave the person a good voice? What is there? If I train my little voice, won't I be there? You see, that attitude alone, you don't know you are programming a climate of hardship. Let me tell you why many Nigerians continue to go through pain. We are embarrassed to acknowledge great things. When we see greatness, we act as if we are blind towards it. Someone can come into this beautiful church right now and see our mothers and our sisters and say, so what, is, what is so special about the conference? What is in, I started organizing conferences since I was small. That's why you are where you are. You, you see this kind of attitude. Please learn this. There are many young arrogant preachers that would enter and see men of God, people, seasoned people who have been used by God and just look and wonder, okay, so what is he saying? Let me see if I can get one or two things. I hear they say he's a nice man of God. You, you see, let me tell you this, my brothers and my sisters. There are battles you cannot fight. The fact that you want to fight it is proof that your life is under an attack because there are battles in this life that you should never try to fight. Are we together? Oh no. I preached a message seven years ago that became a blessing to the body of Christ and I'm honored to be, to have been used by God. It's called commanding results. It was a vision. Please listen. It was a vision that I had, a revelation as to why people's lives never move. And I said, Lord, there has to be a way. Should I fail simply because of my background? Was it my fault? You are born looking like your parents, but you die looking like your knowledge and decisions. It's true. It's true. Someone has to be tired this morning and say, no, it can't be like this again. Someone you have dishonored, something you have dishonored has authorized your hardship. Listen to me very carefully. A mother with eight children and all of them responsible children and you say she's just lucky. Let her leave the children to go abroad and see. You see that dishonor? You have one child, you are almost having BP and a woman had eight children. And as a widow took care of them. Every time you see consistent results, it's no longer guesswork. There is a grace. You cannot be exceptional indefinitely by your strength. It's proof that another system has lifted you. And any wise person will discern that behind these results, there is a grace. I can tell you the key to close doors, dishonor. You don't need to ask the door to close. Just practice this honor and watch the doors shut on their own. Every door that opens, opens to honor. Every door that is shut. The door of the palace, in spite of the chains, she did not have a key, but honor took her to the palace. She bypassed the protocol. Let, let her dasa, had she tried to access the king on her own, even Mordecai could not cross the gate. But a villager's honor takes her right 
to the palace someone is rising in the name of Jesus that means the lack of job was not really about the job it was something about your dishonor when you trivialize a man's usefulness in your life then you are brought into a system where you are forced to recognize that men can be very useful in the rising of men praise the lord i've had the privilege to meet very good people and i've made it as a culture as a person to never trivialize greatness when i see it it takes a lot of humility honor many times will sting your ego but the lift and the dimension it will take you is worth that price please listen to me listen to me the first key we see in the book of esther that was responsible for this effortless transition in fact the first key that we see notice that vashti did not just backslide down from the palace she left immediately look how dangerous this honor is the king never if if is very clear from scripture that vashti was not a woman of honor because there's no record of her running to the king to say oh king have mercy upon me king to hell with you what is there about your palace it's all like let me remind you that once upon a time you were not in the palace in the name of jesus christ i forbid it for enter the palace and have to come out because of this honor my bible says to me the path of the just is as a shining light the bible says it shines ever brighter i've seen this with men of god you are here today in this height have you seen names and seen people that seem to capture your attention then a season comes just fades sometimes it could be a music artist everybody is placing a demand on your grace until you forgot that the favor and the honor of the people is a trust you should not trivialize and suddenly everything goes down whatever you can do in your life to make honor i know people who would have been managing directors today without battles every qualification prophecy had come this honor shut that door and threw the padlock threw the key anywhere train your spirit man when jesus was born he was taken to the temple to honor the people that spiritually contributed to his arrival please listen taken to the temple simeon the prophet lifts him blesses him anna the prophetess blesses him and then he starts to leave now watch this until jesus came to the scene the official voice of god within that territory was john the prophet i hope you know that who we call the baptist Baptism was a strategy to identify the Christ. Look at the rigor he went through to be trained to be able to see Jesus. Now John sees Jesus coming. And then he says, behold the lamb that takes away the sins of the world. And John said, I know you are the Christ. And you know, Jesus, you know, their conversation. And he says that um, I am not even worthy to untie the latchet of your shoe jesus would have said i i thought you don't know jesus let me tell you this listen listen please listen jesus the word was under a closed heaven for 30 years till honor opened his heavens jesus your jesus as the son of god his heavens were closed not even the father opened it he came to the existing authority within that land and jesus said suffer it to be so in other words this is an ordinance that not even me can violate please listen this is powerful it's a law it's not a suggestion it's not an opinion it's a law i jump here by mistake gravity will not say okay i know you are preaching you are just carried away i'm falling straight up praise the lord and then john dips jesus in water and the father is watching when jesus comes out 
then the bible says and the heavens over who said and have a crowd he would have tried it and be surprised he would have tried to call people he would have tried to collect a man's donkey and see what the roman people would have done for him you lose someone's donkey and say the master has need of it who else is the master if not caesar but when your heavens are open there are things that others can do and fail and you can do and pass with it please listen don't just be excited for nothing i want you to get this it's a principle we're going to pray shortly but you have to get this honor opens his heavens and then the father now says this is my beloved son what was he before that the father is saying this now haven't fulfilled this ordinance this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased and then he says here hear you business woman who has announced that lagos should hear you just because you have a good guarantee you will be heard just because you have a voice that sings does not guarantee you will be heard please listen to me just because you have an anointing genuine anointing it doesn't mean you will be heard that verdict hear ye him that's what honor does hear ye her songs hear ye his sermons come to his church honor hear ye him jesus climbs up the mountain five thousand people climb with him because there is a verdict hear ye him for three days they are up that mountain he goes by the sea of Gennesareth and people hear me. Nobody can lift himself. It is not given to men. You do not have the ability to promote yourself. It is not within your jurisdiction. Your assignment is to align yourself to be discerned and promoted. Could this be why we are where we are? Could this be why prophecies continue to come week after week? Let me tell you, it is difficult to honor. His honor will change you like Samson. Even if the person is obviously wrong, the show of honor, talk about the person. He said, look, just forget about it. I know it's true, but how do I say it now? There was a foolish man in the bible who would have been at the wrath of a king except that he had a wise wife called abigail the woman quickly stepped in to bridge the foolishness that the dishonor of that man caused could this be the reason why many families do not work there is a lot of prayer and spirituality but there are different versions of dishonor dishonor from the woman to her husband dishonor to several things i've shared this story and if you permit me to share it a true story i heard it somewhere many years ago that there was a man of god and this man was having a serious crisis in his family I think it had to do with maybe a financial crisis things were not working yet he was a pastor in a church just like this and people would always come to testify pastor prayed for me and doors open now i have a job now i'm abroad and all of that and things were i mean there was fire on the mountain in his own house and then one time a service was running like this and his wife just got up and walked out of the church imagine what happens if her mother just gets up and walks out of here you wonder what happened now and then the man was touched he finished the service did his counseling very quickly and reached for his house and he went home honey what is wrong she never uttered a word please pay attention 
he sat down at the table waiting for his meal what is wrong if i offended you i'm sorry we can talk about it how to serve him there's a section for it it's not that the holy of holies that tray it doesn't come out carelessly it that day and then the plates and you know the man was laughing as if we've been married for years let's not do this children's let me eat she didn't say a word please listen when she brought the last item that would be on the table she now knelt down and looked at him her husband and said servant of god my family is in trouble listen carefully because the anointing on that man continued to bless people who discerned that he was not just a man that he was an anointed man and the wife said when they say lift your hands say well are you not my husband what we quarreled this morning i helped you with your bathing water what is all this lift your hand again and she was shocked that the church was rising but their home was dying and the woman like esther said i found the key it is dishonor that has been closing the door today you are not my husband again today you are a man of god i am your member my home must change hear me let me teach you this there are many dimensions to every man you see the dimension you honor is the one that brings its riches to you your brother is not only your brother your brother is also a prophet he never prophesies to you because the only dimension you call is your brother so you receive stories about how the family is doing back at home that's a brother's reward there are women that carry certain graces please listen to me they never beg quarter to shame something must arise and bail them out you will never see them it's a grace they may not be educated but there's something about their bowing their knees it's like god covenanted with himself whatever they did to god that made him to enter that covenant and one day they'll say i'll pray for you well, I'll pray for me my pastor prayed nothing worked to talk more of you and you remain there let me tell you the truth human beings are mysteriously mysteriously strange just all you see is not all there is praise the lord in everyone seated here there are untapped spiritual dimensions that if honor is engaged on our lives can change there are many women who continue to pray for other people to have children but their children have not seen a need to come mommy i hope you are praying for us well i'll do my best and five years become seven years the day that daughter comes and says mommy this is a seed i brought say for what say, mm -hmm. i have watched everyone you prayed for come with twins triplets i'm not meeting my mother i'm meeting a woman with the grace that can terminate barrenness let me tell you the truth that day that day it would no longer be as usual for many years i would not preach in my own state i would preach in neighboring states i didn't know why that happened my own family my own blood mother things were not going as well and one time my mother was very very sad and she was fed up every time i went to greet them at home i didn't feel like a man of god again it was as if the anointing would hang at the gate as soon as i go out i said okay come back let's get back to work not because they were bad people but one day my blood mother biological mother she now looked at me and said we're tired of this there has to be a way and my mother cried that day and said but you are blessing others and lifting the lives of others and that day for the first time that grace and that anointing i felt that grace with all my heart and i laid my hands on my own blood mother and i said mommy I stand in the name of Jesus and I shift you to a dimension untold. 
today i speak to you in the name of the lord people who do not know me find our family house in joss and knock the gate are your apostles mothers this is for you thank you for giving back to apostle please listen if this teaching does not help you today i don't know where we are going to start from with you because this is a teaching that the results can be instant some of you your result can be after this service god is already showing you the person to truly go and honor to go and say look we are colleagues we graduated at the same time but you have never been without a job for three months when a company seems to throw you in three months another one has come what grace do you have he said, ah, bros, mm, leave bros, please. I'm tired of roaming around like Cain in Lagos, a place of opportunity. Don't you know that this city has its riches? But there are people whose hands has never touched it. They were born and bred here. People come upon your soil and place a demand through honor and walk away with blessings. Who is God speaking to this morning? There are many pastors. Let me tell you this. I've shared with you, maybe I'll just say this and then we'll pray. I'm teaching honor. In 2004, Reinhard Bonke came to Joss for a crusade. I left Kaduna State and I went down because I desired a grace upon that man's life. I was already a man of God. I was already working in miracles. I was already ministering to people. How stupid would I be to imagine we are at the same level? You will never receive from a colleague. There is no transference from colleague to colleague. There has to be a spiritual potential difference. Someone has got to acknowledge and discern. The Elijah, Elisha was never supposed to be a prophet. He was a farmer. But he decided to walk with an angry man. If Elijah were your boss, you would know why the sons of the prophet were not happy people. That temperous man, you don't know what he will call today. Whether you will call fire or call whatever. And the sons of the prophet were obviously offended. But Elijah said, you can shout, oh, you don't know me. There's something I'm looking for. Listen, can you ignore the weakness in men to still get what they carry? Listen, let me teach you this. We're rounding up. I know why we never receive from men because they are ethin. And unfortunately, you will want God to switch the anointing to something more desirable. And God in his economy will leave it there. Let me tell you, the secret of receiving from men to transit to another dimension is hidden in the riddle of Samson. When Samson, please listen, when Samson tore a lion on his way to go and see a lady, are we together now he returned after seven days and he found a mystery he found that there were trees in that place but the bees did not go to put honey in the tree they came and entered inside the carcass and put honey there and so when samson came he was looking for the honey and the bees directed him inside a smelly carcass and he gave a riddle he said out of something strong has come something sweet why will bees not go to trees and enter a smelly carcass this is the mystery of how god stores possibilities the vessels may be smelly but can you endure the smell to get the honey that's the price whoever told you anointed people are perfect in themselves were you not pre-told that the treasure is in earthen vessels Elijah is temperous, but ignore him and you will never carry the prophetic. Imagine a man following this harsh prophet. And he goes from Gilgal, Bethel, down to Jordan. And he says, so now talk to me, what are you looking for? Imagine that kind of thing, that you are following someone he should know. I mean, you would have said, Abba, prof, don't you have brains? Where, where do you see your prophetic? No. When you are desperate for growth, anything is endurable. 
when you begin to complain about things is because you are not desperate enough for growth your boss may be an angry man but one call from him can be used by god to change your life because you mismanaged his anger he threw you out and you acted like it didn't matter see now it's five years five years everybody who can give you a job respects that same angry man and when he hears they want to give you a job he says i told you leave that person angry it's amazing how god watches people and still leaves those things there they laughed at moses and says man you married a black ethiopian woman are you the only one god would talk to moses kept quiet but god said i won't keep quiet god came and said what did i hear you say against moses have i ever talked with you face to face do you think moses is just a man and the glory came and left his sister miriam you know miriam was a prophetess and she was wondering why god was not using her and leprosy just came upon her this honor is not only bad it has side effects side effects that can be demonstrated in your lifetime people can know that you are carrying this as a token of this honor there are many ways to build your life you can pay your way through in pain or you can honor your way through this strange lift called honor I learned this I will never dishonor any man I will never dishonor any church I will never dishonor any people when we got to the airport the precious precious pastor by the way please let's let's um, I spotted let's let's honor her truly truly practice it now thank you ma'am thank you please sit down it was such a gracious reception and my heart was gladdened and i said boy look at this there are people you invite they are surprised that you are not blessed they wonder where the anointing went your dishonor removed it from them and kept it at the door of the church ask jesus he enters a city and he says, ah the carpenter's son's here no wood for us today and jesus says let's go out of this place there is no there is no point trying they will not receive please hear me young people your mother may be in the village she never went to school but do you know when she was small her prophetess mother blessed her and said whoever you open your mouth even if it's in your and bless your life will change please hear me hear me can i give you one more story and then we'll pray did you finish the reinhard bonke story but let me just switch and talk to you about one that relates with you you've heard it in my teachings we were on our way to preach sir in equity it would be my first time there and so we had to fly to um Ilorin, the airport and then we would go by road and so when we went they received us and we we're on our way going and then i started watching the obituaries obituaries and i would see 120 something years 130 something years i said these people are joking call all these guinness book of record to come to nigeria they say the oldest person is 114 come to nigeria where the mystery of longevity dwells one something and then i passed and i saw one 132 years just died in nigeria within your region I noted it I went to preach when I was done preaching and we returned I was passing God is my witness and then I saw one 145 years and then I went back to the 132 it was like a senior apostle who just who just died and then I said I told the driver stop there is a grace for long life here instead of taking the risk and a plane will crash me tomorrow now i'm not i'm not being sarcastic every possibility is secured through understanding graces are transferable many of the graces you ask for left heaven since you don't just know how to bring your portion to you 
I would have said, I'm a man of God. I've spoken long life over people. Uh -uh. I'm too young to take that risk. I plan to live here for a long time. There is, there is, there is work to do for the kingdom. Please listen. And I don't speak Yoruba. And the man there now, he, he, he doesn't seem to speak English, but he looked like a Christian community, small community. I said, no, there has to be a way out, oh Lord. I stopped, I parked this car to receive something solid. Eventually, we found someone who could speak limited English. And I said, okay, we are men of God. We came to receive the grace for long life. Who is the oldest man in this place? He must pray for us before we leave. And then eventually, they interpreted it and they told us to go and meet one old man and we entered the room i was talking then he will interpret watch what happened please i would speak and then he will interpret in yoruba and we said we are here to receive the grace for long life i thought the man would say no we don't have that grace he laughed he said kneel down i cannot know this on my own unless you take over i'll never know this by myself Unless you take over. Listen. That man said, he didn't ask, are you a man of God? Are you the one they call Apostle Joshua Selman? That's nonsense. When it has to do with, re with, with reception, you remove your crown. Throw it far from you. It's not only worship that demands removing your crown. Receiving also. He said, kneel down. I knelt down quietly. And the man started praying in Yoruba quite honestly. I was not interested in what he was saying. All I know was that it's a law. Honor is a law. There is no gate it will not open. I come from the north. There are killings there. I said I must transport this grace for a long life. The moment he was praying, I felt like a crown just being put on my head. And when we were done praying, then I appreciated him, packaged a seed and gave him. And then I went out uh, where to enter the car. Then I saw some women standing there. And then I said, let me go and thank them. They were the first people we contacted. And I went there and I said, you know, Mama, they were interpreting just to say thank you. And they said, you see this man who is 132 years. This is his wife. She was like 120 something. Standing, no stick. I said, let's go back. Let's go back. No, we have to go back. Behind every glory, there is a story. Oh. Let's go back. Two have become one. If the man has died, he's still alive. I thought that she was the wife of his old age, like Ketura. But this is the one and only wife. The man died 132. And then... When they told her she laughed, she tapped me. She said, follow me. Then she opened a room. And I started seeing the pictures from those times where the deep um, camera inside, whatever, if you touch it, it will stain and remain there forever. I started seeing the pictures together. The wife of his youth. What did they know? That the arrows that fly by day, that the noisome pestilence, what did they know what did god do for them so you can go to god in prayer and say god give me long life and he said i've given it he's not lying it is within your territory use honor like a magnet and draw it to you every possibility you pray for is already in lagos here it is the discernment the discernment those people live as if they are not in Nigeria. Out of my, from my father's side, the only person alive is my father. Is that not a risk to not tap into this kind of grace? And then I told her, I said, Ma, we honor you for who we represent. Please forget the fact that we are men of God. I want you to give me the blessing of a mother and the blessing that was upon this man. And the woman said, kneel down, and she removed her shoes. I don't know about you, but when a woman takes off her shoes to stand on bare ground, you better start rejoicing. She took off her shoes, and for 15 minutes, she even started with a song. 
first before she started blessing me when she finished ask my people wherever we are traveling to whether the plane is going round and round i'm sleeping no many scriptures it's true that he keeps them in perfect peace but that the same grace listen you know possibilities by the results they produce if they are not captured in your life the grace is not yet there we are going to pray we are going to do a reimpartation of graces because someone has, has, has been the answer to your prayer for a long time everything you are saying God should give you God gave the person sins and regardless what is happening in Nigeria that person's whether finance or whatever doesn't go down there is a grace that is capable through honor this is what took Esther she honored Mordecai honored her way to the palace please hear me in this conference the Lord is speaking to us by the spirit honor is a weapon it is not always the sword that wins sometimes you need to drop the sword and use the weapon women God is speaking to you it is not always the sword Deborah was a warrior but she never sat on the throne ask Esther how in a seat on the throne ask Esther how to replace Vashti when you do what Vashti did you will follow her ways Vashti said no I'm too proud to honor you she forgot that she was queen only because a king married her it's why we stand here and we acknowledge him regardless of what people say I will never make the mistake of Vashti because every man is a woman in the spirit and if you ignore your husband and carve out a niche for yourself then you are out of that palace when it was time I will be teaching you oh please don't miss tomorrow whatever sacrifice you will make we will, we will open this book of Esther and God will show you something there Esther comes to the king let me give you a preview and says Esther what ailed thee even if it's to half of my kingdom I will give you Esther would have said that's it give me the kingdom the part where the Jews are where they want to kill them just give it to me quickly that would have been a wise strategy but let me show you what honor does it says oh king all I want to do is to show you how great you are I have put a banquet a woman under fire there is a threat happening and the king says what is wrong she says nothing I only came to honor you and I want her man to be there so honor can kill that's how she killed a man you honor an enemy to death did you ever learn that honor is a weapon of mass destruction I want her man to participate in that honor her man comes foolishly goes to tell his household <laughs> you don't know what is going on I'm not only exalted I'm I was specially chosen to eat with the king and then she flaunts the king's glory and then the king said no there is a catch to this my wife or oh, you're now be serious what do you want she says let it please the king that I repeat this again king can I do this again and the king said Vashti why didn't you do this you would have remained in the palace this is all I wanted oh foolish Vashti it's not only Galatians that were foolish the foolishness started from Vashti And I hope it ended with the Galatians. May it never, never be all oh foolish me. Whoever told you honor was for weak people. Women, whoever told you arguing and shouting with the man and say, you don't know you. You go and find out, see the antecedents. You just innocently married me. You, you will soon know that just because many times the sword does not win. The sword may injure, but it may not bring victory. There are times you don't need injury, you need victory. 
if a war is not needed keep your sword not every victory needs war if you don't have to fight let honor lift you above the challenges is God giving us wisdom and she takes the king and blesses him again then there was a particular feast she now organized it was called the feast of wine that was when she made her request not when there was food she said king drink the wine I serve you this wine something happens when you are full of wine I will show you tomorrow are we together hi look let me tell you yours is to play your own part and watch the power of God's laws they will shift things shift systems it will be like you are holding a charm God what are you doing some of you you need to practice this that tomorrow you buy wine and a gift pack and take it to the department where someone vowed that if by June you don't leave this job except I didn't come here before you and you give you the gift and say I'm just here to honor you and ignorant people will say oh foolish you that's why they keep talking honor is a sword it can kill you can honor people down while you rise. <laughs> Her man was honored to the gallows that he built. She never fought her man once. She said, let her man also be in the feast. We're praying. Her man sat down foolishly and while he was eating, he did not know death had come. What is now your request? And she said, my life and that of my people have been threatened he said by who he says the enemy is this wicked her man the king lives for a while and goes to his garden that's what every good man should do when you're under pressure don't talk be silent go out of that place and be risen with wisdom then return and look at this he now fell on the bed where esther was to beg her you see but when god wants to make nonsense out of your enemies their good can be evil spoken of the king just entered when she was begging and said it's not enough that you want to kill my people you now want to rape my wife and then as soon as he said that one of the king's men said sir for your information there is a gallow that was built who asked him maybe they would have just seen a piece but it's And the king said go and hang him we're going to pray listen to me every consistent result has come from the sacrifice that a man has paid with God in the secret with the spirit of understanding woe betides a man who ignores greatness when you see it and without all contradiction the less is blessed the less is not the weak one the less is the one in need praise God I've had the opportunity many times to be at the redemption camp and to pass there I say Lord I know that I'm a man God that you have helped but what grace did you put upon our father are these dimensions not transferable a man that God gives a kilometer and kilometers for an estate that's more than real estate there is a grace for territory you can be struggling to get a space Oh God, two bedroom flat and you will help me. Whereas you are under a grace that has territory. Listen. Women, you can stand for your husbands this morning. 
Say the embarrassment that comes from rent has to end in this conference. I'm a product of many anointings. I have trained myself to not despise graces when I see it. I'm not too big to receive. And you must leave. There are artists here sitting now. There are men and women that God has raised from this ministry. Please listen to me. We are going to pray. That continue to be honored by God around the nations. You have never taken the time. You have greeted them. How far now, man of God? Car, you are doing well. You are home. Ah, you mean you are this? Um, I. You so you are the one. You will never rise that way. This is not human worship. I teach you the wisdom of the ancient. That a day can come, you can say, Sir, I have tried to produce an album for 10 years. It makes people want to help you. Think people just come to help you in this wicked world? Who has your time? There is a grace that draws people. Was it not in your Bible that Gentiles will come, not that you will look for them, to your light and their kings to the brightness of your rising. It says that your gates shall be open. They will be open day and night and not be shut to receive the forces of the Gentiles. There are people in this church who have been marvelously helped like Uzziah by God. By God's grace, finance is not a concern. But you stand today wondering how will tomorrow be financially it is good that you have learned all the business principles it is good that you have learned all the investment principles but do you have the discernment to say lord there is a grace there are people way before they knew what they were doing they were already prospering in that area because they were under a grace something we have ignored has pegged us in this position and we are going to pray and cry for the next two three minutes everybody you're going to be alone with god and your destiny for your family for your children if you have nothing to pray for for yourself you have to pray for someone you love father i love you the palace was full of every other thing but without dishonor it was about to divide I pray in tongues I'm a man of God I have revelation but every door is shut towards me now I see that there are doors only honor can open ah. there are doors mothers is God speaking to us You are crying that God will touch your children. Look what he has done to children in this church. There are children who have, written, who have risen with flawless track records. Never done anything twice in their life. Let's pray. Cast my crown before pray the highest royalty. I am undone before your glorious majesty. I cast my crown before the highest royalty. 
man done before your glorious majesty you're the king of kings and lord of lords you are the king of kings you're the king of kings and lord of lords your glorious majesty Just a few minutes and we're done. Lord is doing a work in our lives. Honor. The mystery behind the strange rising of people. Salabarus katabrande ketipaladabar. I understand the mystery behind the closed doors in my life now that in spite the opportunities that once opened listen if a door ever opened and is now closed this honor closed it and no matter who you are there are many music artists in this nation doors open and this honor shut them out of it there are many preachers that doors opened and this honor shut them out of it many business people you were granted access to spheres and circles. This honor shut you out. Cry to the God of heaven, the restorer of times and seasons. It says the sons of Issachar who had an understanding of the time, they knew what Israel ought to do. Man of God, are you praying? Like the hair of Samson, Lord, I cry for a restoration. Let the doors be opened once again. Let the doors to my music ministry be opened once again. Let the doors to my ministry be opened once again. Let the doors to the storehouse of my destiny be opened once again. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You are going to ask the Lord for grace to discern who is deserving of honor. They may not come in forms that you will see and appreciate. We live in a society where we are obsessed with scanning things from the vistas of society, the sociology within us. The greatest things in your life will not come in forms that you will appreciate. You will need discernment. Lord, grant me discernment to see the graces, to see the individuals and the sacrifices. They are men, but they are lifts. They can lift you. They are men, but they are spiritual systems that can carry you to untold dimensions. They don't have to be men and women of God in ministry. They have to be men and women who are carrying something divine and something powerful. Few minutes we are praying. Let it be from the depth of your heart. Honor, heartfelt, sincere, truthful, unbiased, genuine from your heart. 
Hallelujah. Listen. Please listen to me. Listen to me. Listen to me. When you honor people, just because you suspect there is something in them you can have is hypocrisy. Honor is a culture that must be truthful. I know you have the fortitude for honor when I see what you do with people who have nothing to give you. Honor is a culture that is too contagious to exempt anybody. If that spirit is upon you, you will honor the mighty and the low at the same time. You don't treat everybody like a dog and suddenly turn to someone and say, Wow, uh, Sean, sir. No, you are a hypocrite now. Honor is not political, it follows the purity of your desire. Must be vetted by the sincerity of your desire. It is the reason why you can kneel down and have hands prayed for you and never receive anything. You will fall and stand up and go back. But someone can be in the secret place and your pastor, right in your room, you can say, Lord, I discern that this is a man of God. I don't know what you put upon this man, but Lord, I receive. I've opened him up to a door. Hallelujah. Can I say a word of prayer? Father, I stand here as one who has been granted grace and mercy of the Lord. I stand here only as one privilege of your grace. May we never be ashamed to let men see you. Let the glamour of palace never make us to make the mistake of Vashti. I stretch my hands upon you right now and I pray for you in the name that is above all names. I'm speaking by the Spirit that every dimension you lost through dishonor, every level of freedom, I stand by the God of Jeshua, the one who rides upon the wings of the wind, and I shift you back to that level. I shift you right now. Step back into that dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. I speak to every door that has been closed over your destiny through dishonor. By the message of the God of David, let that door be opened again in the name of Jesus. God is the God of the second chance. He says, and Adam knew his wife again. And she bare a son and he called him Seth. I'm praying for someone who has faith to believe. I stand here and I shift you to a new level in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. I shift you to a new dimension. Spiritually. Financially. Jesus please let me encourage you I know that a number of us here do not fellowship with this parish but please forgive my bias let me plead with you please do not miss the next session I want to show you a very deep mystery in the book of Esther and then I trust God together with all who will be ministering here that God will put something upon your life that when you walk out of this conference it will be worth any sacrifice father we give you praise in the name of jesus christ